Hello everyone. Here we're going to be talking about the fisherman's dilemma and how to solve the fisherman's dilemma. So, we introduced the fisherman's dilemma as a problem that two fishermen are facing when they're trying to decide how long to fish in a lake that is a common resource for them both to take advantage of. And so we have here two fishermen, Alfredo and Bob. Now, when we're trying to think about the, um, the game, we have two different players. Alfredo and Bob are our two players in the game. So remember to correctly specify a game. We have to have players, their strategies, their payoffs, and the sequence of movements um, in the game, whether it's sequential or whether it's simultaneous. So in terms of the strategy sets that they have, each fisherman may fish for either 10 hours or 12 hours. There's an order of play. Here it's a simultaneous game. So they make their decisions simultaneously. They're not acting sequentially. So each one makes their decision at the same time. In terms of their payoffs, the players catch and then eat an amount of fish given by the strategy profile that they've implemented. They catch um, more fish the longer that they fish, but if the other person is also fishing longer, then they're actually going to end up catching fewer fish. So when we think about the um, payoff matrix that captures these ideas, we have the two players. We have um, Alfredo, who is our first player. So we have Alfredo over here. Um, we have Alfredo over here. Alfredo is the player A, he's the first player, and his payoffs are listed here as best, good, worst, and bad. So what we can see here is that for Alfredo, his best outcome is when he fishes 12 hours and Bob fishes 10 hours. So he is fishing longer, but Bob isn't fishing quite as long. That's his best outcome. Um, then he has a good outcome when he fishes 10 hours and Bob also fishes 10 hours. So they're both not fishing quite so long, they're um, both not um, spending quite so long at work. They're getting some fish, but they're um, also not basically imposing a cost on each other. Um, his bad outcome occurs when both he and Bob fish 12 hours. They're spending more time fishing, but because the other person is also spending more time fishing, they catch fewer fish. And so that's bad. His worst outcome is, in fact, when he fishes 10 hours and Bob fishes 12 hours. He catches many fewer fish than he has less to eat. So when we're thinking about this, um, we have basically here a game that is a type of game called a prisoner's dilemma game. We speak about this in the book, but it's a game in which the players end up at a bad outcome um, that is mutually disagreeable, but they struggle to get out of it. Now, as I said, the payoffs, payoffs for each player, um, they correspond to the amount of fish they can catch and consume, and they value and want to increase that. But the amount of time they spend um, fishing um, they want to decrease that. They don't want to spend a huge amount of time fishing. So that's how we're getting these good, um, these best, good, bad, and worst outcomes in this game table. Now, here we can translate those rankings, those ideas to numbers. So what we can see here is that there's a higher number for a better outcome. So four for Alfredo is best, three is good, two is bad, and one is worst. So let's label that again. Four is best, three is good, two is bad, and one is worst. Okay, so those are what we have for Alfredo, those four different outcomes. Four, three, two, one, best, good, bad, worst. Now let's do the same thing for Bob. Bob's payoffs are shown in the top corners. Um, and his corners are shown in pink. And so what we can see for him is we also have a best, good, bad, and worst outcome. Those are what we have for Bob. Now what we can do is we can combine the payoffs for both players. And here we get their combined payoff table. We can see here the payoffs for Alfredo in blue in the bottom corners, and then we can see the payoffs for Bob in pink in the top corners. All right, this is our payoff table. This is a way that we can characterize the game. Now, the question is, once we've done this, we have to think about a way of solving the game. So that's our next question. How do we go about predicting the outcomes of the game? So to determine the solution as a way of predicting the outcome of a game, we need what we call a solution concept. So a solution concept is a statement about how players will behave in the game. 
and that can be the basis of a prediction about the game's outcome. We want to be able to predict what the players will do if they were to actually play this game. So we're going to predict the outcome of a game based on the rules of the game and a solution concept. So the key idea that we're going to rely on is a solution concept um, for the, an equilibrium. And an equilibrium is a state in which there is nothing in the situation that will cause the state to change. So we want to have an idea of, an equi of a solution that produces an equilibrium. A predicted outcome will be an equilibrium. That's an outcome that's stationary. Neither player wants to deviate from that outcome. They're going to stay there. So the most widely used concept is called the Nash Equilibrium. And it's based on the idea that players choose what we call best response strategies. So a best response is a strategy that results in the highest payoff given the strategies of other players. So let's say that again. It's the um, highest payoff given the strategies of other players. So we're going to be able to implement that in the following game table, the game table that we've looked at for the Prisoner's Dilemma. So let's think about this here. If I say that Bob's strategy is given, I try to think for Alfredo what he would do that would get him his highest payoff. So let's assume that Bob was playing 10 hours. That's why we have the 12 hour strategy blanked out. So let's say, given that Bob would play 10 hours, what would Alfredo choose to do? And you can see here we have a black dot. The black dot indicates um, Alfredo's preferred payoff. Now what can we see here? He can get four or he can get three. Now we know that four is greater than three. So that, what that means is that we put the little dot in there indicating that this is Alfredo's best response. That's the little circle, the little dot there indicating Alfredo's best response to Bob playing 10 hours. So Alfredo's best response to Bob playing 10 hours is to play 12 hours. Now let's think about what happens when um, Bob plays 12 hours. If Bob, Bob plays 12 hours, then Alfredo now has a choice between one and two. He gets one if he plays 10 hours. He gets two if he plays 12 hours. Two is greater than one, and therefore um, playing 12 hours is a best response to Bob playing 12 hours. What this then leaves us with is Bob's best response I'm sorry, Alfredo's best response to Bob playing 12 hours is 12 hours. Um, Alfredo's best response to Bob playing 10 hours is to play 12 hours as well. 12 hours is their best response in both cases. Okay, now, if we look at this game, we can think about what would happen for both Alfredo and Bob. I'm going to indicate both of their best responses here. So let's start off with um, Alfredo once more. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a blue dot to indicate um, what Alfredo would prefer. So if we look at three and we look at four, we know that four is greater than three, therefore he prefers 12 hours. If we look at two and we look at one, we know that two is greater than one, so we put a dot in here and we'd see that um, his best response is 12 hours. Now let's look at Bob's payoffs. For Bob's, I'm going to think about using a red pen. And here we think about four and we think about three. So what are we thinking about there? We'd say, given that Alfredo plays 10 hours, what should Bob choose? Bob can either get a payoff of four from playing 12 hours or a payoff of three from playing 10 hours. Four is greater than three. And so therefore, he's going to put a circle in 12 hours. Now let's think about what Bob would prefer against Alfredo playing 12 hours. Alfredo, um, here Bob could either get 2 or he could get 1. And we know that 2 is greater than 1. And therefore he's going to put a circle in this cell. The cell is the description of what goes on in the one little block where you've got both payoffs. And so looking at that cell, we can see that there is a dot for Alfredo, and there is a circle for Bob. The dot and the circle indicate a mutual best response. The Nash equilibrium is a mutual best response. So when both players best respond, we have a Nash equilibrium, a position from which neither player wants to deviate. So let's see that here. 
we've got um, the 12 hours, 12 hours um, uh, profile. So both players playing 12 hours. And I've got the circles and dots here now indicated in black. So where do we go next? The solid black dot indicates Alfredo's best response given Bob's decision to fish for either 10 hours or 12 hours. The hollow circles indicate Bob's best response given Alfredo's decision to fish either 10 hours or 12 hours. The Nash equilibrium is the cell that it contains both dots, or both the dot and the circle. In this case, there is just one Nash equilibrium, both fishing 12 hours. Nash equilibrium, which we abbreviate to NE, is in parentheses 12 hours, 12 hours. The payoffs at that Nash equilibrium for Alfredo, Alfredo gets two, Bob gets two. So the players get their payoffs of two and two at the Nash equilibrium, 12 hours, 12 hours. Both players mutually best respond and neither player wants to deviate. So let's think about that for a second, that neither player wanting to deviate. If we look at this outcome, we can say, if I am Alfredo, would I want to change my strategy? Okay, so here we're saying Bob is playing 12 hours. Would Alfredo unilaterally want to change his strategy? If he changed his strategy, he would get one. Alfredo doesn't want to do that. He's not going to change his strategy. Similarly for Bob, if Alfredo was playing 12 hours and Bob was choosing between 12 hours and 10 hours, he could switch and get a payoff of one. Would he want to do that? No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't want to switch. That means 12 hours, 12 hours is a Nash equilibrium and it is stationary. Neither player wants to deviate. And that is how we understand the Nash equilibrium of this game.